Now comes something really important, which is impulse. Something that a lot of students, I think, really struggle with. You have an equation for it. You're actually told impulse, this is in your data book, look, impulse equals, uh, how does it go? It goes uh, F delta T equals, um, is it M delta V or do they give you delta P? Ah, I think I just said delta P. You have to know that it's that. Here we go. This is the impulse equation. You get this in your data booklet. It looks just like this. So what does this mean? Well, impulse then is a change in momentum. That's the key thing, okay? So impulse is a change in momentum. Oops, oh no, I got my pen out, there you go. It's a change in momentum. So if the momentum changes, then there's been an impulse. Now the important thing is this force and uh, delta T. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw myself a graph of F and delta T. An impulse is really like a kick or a push or something like this. So I imagine like, you know, if I kicked, uh, I don't know, a ball, then I would impart a force on that ball in a short amount of time. See that? So therefore, um, you can calculate then what the impulse is. So the way the impulse works is, I mean, this graph might be actually a weird shape. It might do some strange shape, like, I don't know, what's a common one that they like to use in IB, like that, like a nice sort of shape like this. And the question is like, how do I find the impulse from just this one graph? And that brings up what I think is maybe one of the most useful things I'm gonna show you, maybe in this whole course, is what to do if you're stuck and you have a graph. So this is an example here. This shows up all over the place. I use this trick pretty much everywhere. Whenever I'm not sure what to do, I just do this and it almost always saves the day. So here's what you do. When you're stuck and you have a graph, so let's say I'm looking at a graph. I don't know what this is, okay? It doesn't even matter what it is. It could be any sort of shape. It can be anything. We have this thing uh, called Y, whatever that is, and it's got units of Y, you know, like, I don't know what, whatever units. We have some thing X, and it's got units of X. So this could be like a force, in this case, force, which has units of Newtons, and delta T, which has units of seconds, for example. Um, then you can figure out what to do here. So if you're not sure what to do with a graph, there's only three things you could really do with it. You could either read a value directly. So what I mean by that is, let's say you take an X thing, you go up here, then you go over there and get the Y value or vice versa, take the Y value, read it down, go to the X. You can either read the value directly or you could be using the gradient. If you use the gradient of something, remember that means you have to take a tangent line and then you actually find the gradient of that line. The units of gradient, keep this in mind, the units of gradient will have, because remember how gradient goes? Gradient is, isn't it, uh, rise over run? So isn't that equal to delta y over delta x? Like, you know, you have to say, take some sort of, like let's say it was this right here. I would take some sort of gradient right here. Then I would find out, you know, what was the delta y, what was the delta x, I could measure that. Well, I could do it right here, if I was wondering something right here. I could take the gradient, but keep in mind what units it'll have. The units it'll have will be units of y divided by units of x. So to have those units, in this case, if I did the gradient of this bad boy over here, I would have, let's see, newtons per second. So in that case, it would be newtons per second. That's one other option. And the last option is you could take the area under the curve. So what I mean by that is you might actually, uh, I don't know, maybe from here to here, maybe take the area under the curve right here. So the area is gonna have uh, units of, because of course you do length times width, right? You do, um, I should do area equals x times y, which in this case right here, then you can say that the area then will have units of whatever x was times whatever y was. In other words, these units, y times x. It'll have those units. So I basically look at the units to tell me what to do. So if I'm looking for a question and I'm sort of, they'll often give you a hint in the idea about what kind of things you're looking for. I just take a guess and see, does this get me closer to what I need or farther? So in this case, look at this carefully then. If I've got impulses F times delta T, multiplying a thing times a thing, is that a reading of value directly, gradient or area under the curve? Hope you can see area under the curve is multiplying, isn't it? So you can then state with this that the impulse, because it's equal to F delta T, that's this thing times this thing, you could then say it's the area under uh, curve of uh, F versus T. And what units will it have? You could say that impulses units will be, let's see, 
newtons times seconds. So you can say impulse will have units of newton seconds. You could also have, say it has kilogram meters per second, but this is another unit. So you can also say that impulse has units of this. This is really important. So I hope this is going to really help you out to decode some of this strange stuff.